heaven is no other. Jesus is the way. Is a holy way. Jesus is the answer. Oh, the world today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 the name of God for the special opportunity we have to be blessed this evening again. This is your favorite program, Kingdom Life, coming to you from your inspirational station, Echo 89.7 FM. This program comes up from 8.05 to 8.35 every Sunday evening. I'm Jumi Adetoyesho Lagunju, the minister on this program. Our Heavenly Father has been using this special program to bless millions of people out there. And I want to implore you Please, it's not about any denomination. It's not about any religion. It's not about any sect. It's about coming to our Heavenly Father to be blessed. Whatever you are believing God for tonight, the mere fact that you are tuned to this program this evening, it's not by accident. The Lord had ordained it that you will hear this voice. And as you are hearing me tonight, if there's any ailment you are believing God for, for deliverance, for you to be healed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Victory has come your way in Jesus' name. Amen. I pronounce healing upon you, whatever part of the body, either externally or internally, either your internal organ, whatever it may be, I pronounce healing upon you organ right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever may be responsible for it, either it has been diagnosed by any doctor or not, Heavenly Father is the one that created every part of that body. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest physician. You ailment, you defect in that organ. I order you to go out right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord, for you have healed your child. You have delivered that individual. I give you all the glory and adoration. And that individual out there, you are in the corner of your room. You are totally disappointed by what is happening to you. You are even fed up with life. And before you proceed to the next level of doing something uh, something bad to yourself, don't even think of it, of committing suicide. The Lord is saying the joy has come back to your life. That load, that weight that has been pulling you down, that has been weighing you down, and you feel so sad that you feel like life should come to an end for you. Tonight, the Lord has destroyed every yoke concerning that challenges or the challenges you're having in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. The death that has been making you to run a skater, the Lord is granting you uncommon favor. The doors that look so short that it appears no one can open it, the Lord is opening every door that has been shut against you in Jesus' name. Amen. And tonight, you are going to sleep like you have never slept before in Jesus' name. Amen. I pronounce peace of God upon your life, upon your family. You are not dying. You are not dying. Amen. You are not committing suicide. You are coming back to life and you'll be giving unto others, lending unto others, never to go borrowing again in Jesus' name. Amen. But I thank you, Lord, for that individual. I thank you, Lord, for the people you have healed. I thank you, Lord, for the victory in the life of that individual. And that person out there, you are believing God. For the fruit of the womb, the shame is getting too much for you. Becoming unbearable. And you're even afraid of even losing that your home. For your husband leaving you for another woman in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your shame is turned to joy in Jesus' name. Amen. You are having your own child and not just a child you are having. You are having multiple with abundant blessing from above for you to take care of them in Jesus' name. Amen. The individual out there, your own case is not about everything that has been mentioned. You just don't know why. You can't sleep. You are afraid of the unknown. Th things just keep on dropping upon your heart and you feel like you should be running away. Every negative shadow, every fear, every fright in your life, I declare them totally destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of God, the glory from above will be the one overshadowing you and be the crown upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you Lord for that you've done. For in Jesus Christ's name, 
we have prayed. Amen. Mm-hmm. I thank God for you, my dear listener out there. I know that Lord has done it for you. Please do not forget to share your testimony. Get in touch with us on our email address or you connect us on the phone to share the testimony of what the Lord has done for you. God loves you. He cares for you. And I want to plead with you. Draw the attention of someone else in your neighborhood to this program every last Friday of month. Our phone number for you to reach us with your testimonies is 0909-328-9075. 0909-328-9075. And great will continue to be your testimonies in Jesus' name. And mark you, don't forget to tell somebody about this program. 8.05 to 8.35 every Sunday evening on the Koi 89.7 FM. Come join the praise at the next praise arena program taking place every last Friday of the month at Nikon Hotel VGC Lekki Lagos between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. Sing praises to the Most High and see how all your impossibilities become possible through His grace. Victor Olayeni, Okiki Jesu Gospel Fuji Band, Nife Sachs, Tunde and the Beat Creator and other gospel artists will be there to thrill you to lovely and inspiring songs. Venue again is Nikon Hotel VGC Lekki Lagos between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. every last Friday of the month. Come, say it with praise at the praise arena and turn your prayer points to praise points. Host Fumi and Jumi Adeto Yeshe or Lagunju. Jesus is Lord. My dear listener out there, as I said earlier on, I'm Jumi Adeto Yeshe or Lagunju, the minister on this program. I'm not alone in the studio tonight. I have with me my co-presenters. They are Sister Lua Fumilayo and Brown Lua Damilola. Oluwa Damilola is a young adult. Oluwa Damilola is 17 years old. Thank you very much, Damilola, for being with us. At least in the last few months, you have been home on holiday before you go back to your university. So, Oluwa Damilola, you are welcome to the program again. Good evening, listener. Thank you very much. My dear listener there, you know what? You see, there is no age that is too little or too big to get your children to be part of this program. Oluwa Damilola started with us on this program 10 years ago. And to God be the glory, he has always been around. Even when he went to the university and uh, uh, he came back again, joyfully was able to, to join us. So please, let your teenager, the teenagers out there, let them be part of this program. Those ones that are not yet teenagers, let them be part of this program. There's always, always something that law will add to their life to prepare them for a greater future. A success, I mean, successful life in every area of their life in Jesus' name. Amen. So, my dear listener out there, I want to believe you are doing that one. And if you miss the opportunity tonight, next one, don't miss it, okay? Get your children to be part of the program. Oluwa Damlora, thank you once again. You're welcome, Pastor. Uh, with me as well is our sister Lua from Laya. You are welcome to the program tonight. Good evening, listeners. My dear listener out there, in the last few episodes, we have been looking at a series of messages on the Redeemer's footsteps. And we are focusing on Christ taught love. There we see how our Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated love, revealed what love is to us, and he himself is the love of God that has come into our life. So my dear listener out there, the appeal tonight is this. Please do not allow all these messages to go like this without you personalizing it. Internalizing it, make it to be part of you. And again, pass it on to your children. Share it in your offices. Encourage other people with the world. As you are doing it, you are becoming channels of blessings to others. And great will continue to be your success in Jesus' name. Amen. In one of the episodes, we look at the commandment in the scripture. You see, the word commandment used. Most of the time, we look at it as if it's the law. And because it's the law, there's a king here to spank someone because he's not doing the right thing. No, it's just for want, for lack of translation that the word law or commandment is used. The ideal translation for it is instruction. Instruction. So, but at times when you use the word commandment or the law, it's just to enable people to connect to what they are used to. But they are really instructions from my Heavenly Father. We are told in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11, as we read in the previous episode, about this book, you should meditate on it, teach it to your children, Use every opportunity to demonstrate it. You will read from verse 18 to verse 25. We are not going to read that tonight. We read it in the previous episode. Use every opportunity to demonstrate it to the children. And why is the scripture focusing on the children? It is at that formative age that you build the right leadership in, in, in them. For them to connect to the right values, the godly values. And the scripture says when you do this, as they grow up, they will continue to have great success. 
they will continue to succeed in what they are doing and no one will be able to stand before them they will be victorious wherever they are they will be victorious wherever they are so the focus was on make sure these children are learning it imagine us in this country I remember some years back, some people were mentioning, referring to some leaders we have, and those leaders brought some uh, discipline and the principles they taught us that time. And after that time, things started going the other way around. We are not having a firm grip in, in the area of that discipline. Imagine if at that time, we make those disciplinary process or the teaching derived value, we extend them as processes to our schools. The children that were about uh, that, that were probably five years at that time will be about 20 something or 30 years old now. So that means, as the Heavenly, our Heavenly Father is emphasizing, teach this to your children. If you have brought all those processes to elementary school, to the secondary school, or to the colleges, and will make it to be way of life, make it to be culture for people to imbibe it, then we'll be having a greater and better society in terms of the right values. But it's never too late. That's what the Lord is telling you and I. Through the scriptural teachings, let this word of God be things that we entrench in our home, in our family. We look in that episode, the scriptural teachings, in the area of when they are having the Lord's Supper, the communion in families. And as a group, there's always this focus on the children, teaching them on kindness, highlighting who is a wicked child, and what the children need to connect to. So the Lord is reminding you and I tonight, how well are we teaching, spelling it out in the right language the children will understand? What it takes to be kind-hearted, what it takes to be considerate, what it takes to have the plight of the other people at the back of our mind, how our action or our inaction affect the other, pe or the other people. Let's look at this in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22. From verse 1 to verse 4, and we have Oluwa Damilola to read for us. And as we are reading it, the Lord is asking you, does this affect me in any area? Am I considerate in the way I relate with people? Am I relating with people the right way or the way Heavenly Father expects me to do? You can go ahead, please. If you see your brother's ox or sheep strain, do not ignore it, but be sure to take it back to him. If the brother does not live near you or if you don't know where he is, take it home with you and keep it until he comes looking for it. Then give it back to him. Do the same if you find your brother's donkey or his cloak or anything he loses. Do not ignore it. If you see your brother's donkey or his ox fall on the road, do not ignore it. Help him get it to its feet. Thank you. What the scripture is saying there, referring to what they use at that time as personal effect, means of transportation, things they use for work in terms of for the farmers, and things they wear personally. That's why he refer to garments and things like that. And it means do not just ignore what is happening to you, I mean, around you concerning the plight or what is happening to other people. Your brethren, your brother. And you might be saying, yes, because it's my brother, my townsman, my village man, my church person. Wow, that's amazing. But if you want to limit it to that, there's a place in the scripture that says per adventure, the people you come across or the items you come across, the animals you come across, they are not that of your brethren or your, of your brothers, of your relation or your townsman. They could even belong to your enemy. The Lord is saying, do not ignore it. See what you can do to reach out. See what you can do to touch the life of that individual and every situation, not for personal gain, but in reference to God. And God is saying, when you do it, you will see what I will do in turn for you. I will bless you. This is the unconditional love that the Lord is saying we should show to others. Now, people may want to take the word love out of context. The word love, according to the scripture, means not being indifferent to the plight of other people. Don't be indifferent to the plight of other people. And that is what has been made a culture, I mean, a way of life in some part of the world. In, fact, in the Western world, you'll be amazed. There are a lot of people who say they don't worship God the way we worship God. They may not be as religious as we are. But in terms of the scriptural values, they have made it to be a culture. That is why when you hear some, some of this Western world, they have issues with another country. Maybe there is a war going on. When there is anything happening, any calamity, natural disaster happening to the country that they are, have, they are, they are warring with, they are loggerhead with, they will be the first set of people to respond to touch the life of people that are affected out there. You, you can see the difference between issues and the, and the values and the culture. So the Lord is telling you and I, we should not allow our Christianity to just be for mouth. It should translate to the way we relate with people. 
Look at the way contracts are handled in the society. Look at the way employment are handled. Look at the way people are managed. Look at the governance we have in the society. Look at the way people are oppressed out there. If truly we bring the Christ teaching, we bring the godly values, our country will not be where it is today. The selfishness and the greed we see around us will not be where it is. That's why the Lord is reminding you and I through this program to make Christianity a way of life, not just a religion. And that's why we are looking at this topic, Christ taught love. Let's look at what the book of Exodus chapter 23 says. And we see how it connects and it balances it with where Lord Adam Lola read in Deuteronomy chapter 22. From verse 1 to 4, you can go ahead please in Exodus 23. Verse 4, if you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall surely bring it back to him again. Verse 5, if you see the donkey of one who hates you lying under its body, and you will refrain from helping it, you shall surely help him with it. The Lord is saying, look, even if the person is your enemy, what can I do in reference to God and show that act of love, not being indifferent to their plight? This is the kindness, this is being considered the courtesy and the respect that the average child in the land of Israel grow up with. And as they are becoming the, the adult, the young adult, and the elderly people are there, it is already part of what they have in them. My dear listener, how well are you doing this with your children? How well am I doing it with my children? How well am I even re-examining my own life? Do I have this Christ and godly nature? You know, there's a place, we, something we always say and tell people, I will be touching it shortly, maybe in this program or the subsequent one. It says, you can be a good person without being a Christian. But you cannot be a Christian without being a good person. You can be a good person without being a Christian. Oh, that person is very good, he's very kind, he treats people well. You can be one without being a Christian. But without fetch you anything, without lead you somewhere, that's a different topic entirely. So you can be a good person without being a Christian. But you can't be a Christian without being a good person. Because Christianity is all about Christ. And Christ is about love, about being good about being considerate, about being kind-hearted. So if you are a Christian out there, and you are far from this, the Lord is saying, this is a very good time for you to wake up, for me to wake up. You can't be a Christian without being a good person. You can't be a Christian without being kind-hearted. You can't be a Christian without being compassionate. You can't be a Christian. You can't be a good family man, or a good family woman, a good wife, or a good husband, without being respectful to your, to your spouse. If you are lacking any of this, or you are lagging behind in this area, the Lord is saying, re-examine yourself, retool yourself, equip yourself with his word, with his teaching, for you to be the ideal person that wants you and I to be, being followers of Christ. You know, there's something we had a couple of years ago on this program about definition of Christianity. And we picked the word Christianity from where it started in the Bible. Do you realize that disciples and the apostles did not call themselves Christians, that we are Christians? No, they didn't call themselves Christians. People looked at them in Antioch, and they looked at their behavior, the way they relate, the way they do things, and they, they dub them, they call them miniature Christ, little Christ. Because of the way they behave, they replicated things our Lord Jesus Christ, or everything he was doing. They replicated it, and they saw Christ in them. And the question for you and I is this, Will people see Christ in you? Do they see Christ in me? If the answer is far, maybe that Christian I'm answering could just be an alias. But the Lord is saying we need to follow our Redeemer's footstep. Christ taught love. How well does this point me to Christ in what I do? Let's quickly look at this together again in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 and see where our Heavenly Father sequentially takes this. Oluwada Lola read from verse 1 to 4 about the love for our brethren. When they are not around us, are there things that they, they, they require urgent attention? We should be eager to see what we can do to touch life, what we can do to help, what we can do even on one-on-one -on -one interaction we have out there relating the offices and not allowing grudge or hatred or animosity to take over our action in what we do. Then in chapter 23 of Exodus says, even if the person is your enemy, you have issues, or the person hates you, the Lord is saying, do not allow this to be cloud you, prevent you from showing my love. Do not be, inconsider I mean, do, do not be in, 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 inconsiderate. You should be considerate in the way you relate with them. 
Let's look at verse 6 to verse 7. You can go ahead, please. Deuteronomy chapter 22. If you come across a bird's nest beside the road, either in the tree or on the ground, and the mother is sitting on the young, on the young or on the eggs, do not take the mother with the young. Verse 7. You may take the young, but be sure to let the mother go, so that it may go well with you and you may have a long life. Thank you. In chapter 22 of that uh, same uh, Deuteronomy, from verse 6 to 7, their way we see where our Heavenly Father was revealing to the children of Israel the highest level of being considerate, that they should be considerate even to the, to the least of the animals, the birds out there. You should be considerate to their plight. He was telling them to avoid every form of cruelty to animals. Amazing. Cruelty to animals. And this is the way they were teaching the children. You should avoid any form of cruelty to animals. You should make sure you are considerate because those little animals, they are helpless. They need your help. If they are the ones you are to kill for food or as meat, the Lord is saying, I've given you dominion over them. But where they need that special care, for the time they are helpless, they are in distress, do not expose them to danger. That is what that chapter 22 of verse 6 to 7, uh, verse 6 to 7 of that Deuteronomy chapter 22 is saying. Now let's take it home a little. In the Western world, amazing. I love using the Western world because when I see a lot of things being done there, which is really a culture, and I see it vis-a-vis -vis the scripture, what the scripture is saying, I see a direct correlation. As in what we are saying. You know, there are some farmers overseas that are being monitored or being tried in the law court for animal cruelty. And guess what? Why? There was one that I read in this, uh, I, I read and I even watched the trial on, uh, on TV where the, animal, I mean, the animals were put, more than one animal uh, were put in a cage, squeezing the animal together and maltreating them creating a lot of inconveniences for the animals that were transported from the south and from the north to the south. Within the change, uh, they had a change in weather. And he's saying, because you maltreated the animals, there's heavy fine on you. Even the licenses of some farmers were withdrawn because they treated the animals with cruelty. Parking them, overloading them in a, in, in a form of uh, uh, during transportation. Let's go back home a little and back to our country. How well do we treat our own fellow human being? Talk less of the way we treat animals. How well do people treat house help around them compared to the way we treat animals? The Lord even relates treating animals with when you do this, oh Lord, Lola, please, I want you to read the last part of that same chapter where he put a reward, a reward behind it about that verse 6 and verse 7. Read the first part, I mean, the, the, the verse 7 of it, please. Verse 7. You may take the young, but be sure to let the mother go, so that it may go well with you, and you may have a long life. Thank you. The Lord is saying, when you do this, he put a premium, a reward on it, when you are considerate to all those least things, even the animals, your life will be prolonged, and it will be well with you. So, my dear listener out there, you can't toy with the word of God. As you apply his teaching, as you apply the word of God, it will continue to guarantee our success. Our victory in the area of love, in the area of compassion, in being considerate, and the way we treat others. If God could say that when you are considerate, with respect to the plight of the animals, of the birds that are least out there, how much more being considerate uh, when it comes to your fellow human being and the Lord is saying for being considerate with the plight of that animal your life will be prolonged and it will be well with you my dear listener out there time will not permit us for us to complete the message tonight but it's about listening to this message hearing it and checking within yourself how well is this affecting the way I treat other people how well do I treat my, my family my wife my husband the people that I work with in the offices my subordinate or even the people that I have authority over, it may not be in the offices. How well do I teach my children? How well do I reveal this to them? So that you and I will be able to re-examine our life on a daily basis. There's a place in the book of uh, uh, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, that we always retreat and we refer to it, that this book of law, the word of God, 
when you meditate on it day and night, when you relate with people based on it, now, what does God say? The Lord is saying, you will have good success. It will be well with you in what you do. Let's quickly read it together. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have a good success. Thank you. The Lord is saying, as you are listening to the word of God like this, you meditate on it. How well do I do this? You know, a lot of time I re-examine my life. Even though the Lord is using us to preach this message, I listen to some of the messages or messages from other pastors and I will sit down and be checking, wow, I didn't do this right the last time. I'm supposed to treat these people, this person better. I didn't treat this fellow the right way I'm supposed to have treated the person. I will do this next. As I'm doing it in reference to the word of God, in obedience to the instruction, I know the Lord said I will have good success. Great will be your reward in Jesus' name. Amen. As you treat other people with the consciousness of what will God expect me to do? What will Jesus do in the way I treat these people? As you keep on doing it, you know what? The Lord will do beyond your expectations. Whatever you are believing God for in Jesus' name. Amen. God loves you. He cares for you, my dear listener out there. As you always say, Christianity is a way of life, not just a religion. Let others see Christ in you. Amen. You can link us on our email address. Kingdom Life Family at Yahoo.com or through our producer, Taiwo Omoshule, Eko 89.7 FM, Latif Jack on the way, Agidingbi, Ikeja. A sound engineer on this program has been Sunayon Joseph. Remain blessed. Thank you very much, my dear listener out there. As we always say on this program, please, our Heavenly Father cares for your safety, for your security. But when you are going on the road, remember one thing. Obedience to the law of the land is obedience to the word of God. Please use your seatbelt. Fasten your seatbelt. Either you are sitting in front or you are, you are sitting at the back. Whether you are the owner or you are the borrower. Please use your seatbelt. It could save your life. Everyone seated in the vehicle should use their seatbelt. When a car is going at 60 kilometers per hour, everybody is going at the same speed. If anything stops the car immediately or suddenly, you will continue to travel. Unless you have something to hold you back, which is the seatbelt. When you are riding on a bike or car, please use your crash airmen. It could save your life and be considerate of other road users. You will not die young in Jesus' name. You will live long and live long enough to see your children and great-grandchildren. But please, always be mindful of other road users. I'm Jumi Adeto Yishon Lagonju. Be part of this program next week Sunday by 8.05. Remain blessed. Come join the praise at the next praise arena program taking place every last Friday of the month at Nikon Hotel, VGC, Lekki, Lagos between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. Sing praises to the Most High and see how all your impossibilities become possible through His grace. Victor Olayeni, Okiki Jesu Gospel Fuji Band, Nife Sax, Tunde and the Beat Creator and other gospel artists will be there to thrill you to lovely and inspiring songs. Venue again is Nikon Hotel, VGC, Lekki, Lagos between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. every last Friday of the month. Come, say it with praise at the praise arena and turn your prayer points to praise points. Host Fumi and Jumi Adetoyeshe or Lagunju. Jesus is Lord. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost, that's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the 